In this video, I'm gonna show you guys what to do with your old inventory and how to get rid of it. Thanks for tuning in for another video, guys. My name is Phil. If this is your first time on my channel and you wanna learn how to work from home and be your own boss by reselling on eBay, then make sure you subscribe to this channel for all sorts of tips, tricks on how you can do so. Now with that out of the way guys, let's get into the topic. How can you get rid of that old inventory, all that stale inventory that's just building up and building up in your eBay store? Well, what I personally do is what I like to call the squeeze. Now personally guys, when I pick up inventory, I pick up quite a bit. I usually pick up uh, either by the pound or you know by the ton, uh, you know by the truckload, by the box full. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I do shop you know around town. I do hit thrift shops. I do hit garage sales, so I do buy things individually, but regardless, uh, even if I'm buying things individually or if I'm buying them in bulk or, you know, or by the piece or a, a whole, a whole lot at one time. Now, the first thing I do when I get everything back to the, to the office is separate the juice from the rest. And that's basically the best of the best of what I picked up that day. Um, and then, you know, I will stack. And then there's two other stacks after that. So there's basically the juice, which is these things are taking priority. And I'm going to get these things on as soon as possible. Uh, because these items, these are basically my big ticket items. Uh, then the following uh, two stacks are basically B's and C's. So it's A, B, and C. Uh, the B and C stacks, the B stacks are, uh, you know, the items that follow, uh, you know, right behind the juice. In other words, you know, once I've listed all the best that I have, then these items will be listed. And nine times out of 10, they're, they're really good items to list. I mean, obviously everything that I'm buying is good, uh, but some things, that, you know, basically better than others. So, uh, you know, once I get to the B's and I list those, then basically what's left are the C's. And, uh, you know, therein lies the conundrum as far as, you know, what to do with those items because, uh, you know, a lot of those items can run any, can range in price anywhere from maybe uh, 15 to 20 or 25 dollars uh, you know 25 probably on the high end so it's about 15 to 25 dollars for those for those C stack items and uh, you know it's basically you know what to do with those items so uh, what I will do is uh, you know list those as well you know so basically everything is listed and from that point uh, begins the squeezing process the high dollar items do sell right off the bat uh, but then what I'm left with is is a small portion of juice and uh, you know what I'll do after that is just lower the price uh, you know on, on, on my highest dollar items I will lower the price on them and run them again so I'll basically I'll usually run them for 10 days with a buy it now um, if they if they don't sell you know that first round of 10 days then I will run them again for 10 more days with a lesser price uh, and then following another 10 day cycle uh, with even a lesser price so it's a, that's a 30 days that we've got there uh, all in all uh, you know dropping the price twice but, uh, you know, after that third time, they're sort of in my store for the long haul. In other words, I'm not going to drop, I'm, I'm not going to, you don't want to drop your, your best items. You know, you don't want to just keep dropping and keep dropping and keep dropping the prices unless what you have is really in demand and you're sort of overpricing it. But with clothing, um, you know, clothing is subjective, you know, it's fashion. So, you know, you, you can't really put a price on fashion, you know. I mean, you can and you can say, well, these are worth this much and these are worth that much. But a lot of things that we sell, uh, you know, you can't find a lot of those items uh, anymore, especially if you sell something, you know, that's vintage. Um, or if you sell something that's just not being made anymore, it's not exactly vintage. But, you know, it was made five or seven years ago or maybe eight years ago, which isn't vintage, but they don't make that pattern. They don't make that style anymore. So that makes it sort of a one off item um, even if it's not a one-off there aren't as many of those particular pieces in the world so you don't have to just keep dropping the price and dropping the price you know until you until until you finally sell it uh, what I will do is put the price on it that I know that it's worth I'll put it in my store and let it ride and it will sit there for you know depending I mean it could sit there for three months it could sit there for six months I've had things sit there for a year and, and longer uh, and that just depends on what the item is what the demand for that item is and how much I want to get back for it based on how much I paid for it and how much that I actually know that it's worth so in other words don't give away your good stuff guys uh, put it up there put a good price on it and be willing to sell it for a little while now, once the items, uh, you know, the items have been in my store for a while, you know, uh, then I will, um, I will go through, you know, say for any particular item, you know, it's been in my store, let's say for uh, three months, you know, I've, not, I've been seeing it, you know, it's cycled through three or four times because I do only run auctions for, or um, I do only put items in my store for 30 days at a time. And what that does is forces me to go in and, uh, you know, the squeezing process begins at that point, basically, 
uh, if an item doesn't sell, uh, you know, the first time or the first month or two or maybe three months depending on the item like I said it's each is going to depend on you know the particular item what you pay for it uh, you know how how in demand it is uh, you know how many people are going to be looking for that particular item uh, is going to you know have a, a bearing on, on how much you're going to get for it and how quickly that it will sell so um, at that point I will begin you know going through uh, and looking at the price uh, to see if it's overpriced I will look at the title and see maybe if the title isn't right uh, I'll go through the description and find out if maybe, uh, you know, maybe there's something really wrong with that shirt or that jacket or those pants or those shoes. And I just, you know, I've forgotten that, that it was, that, you know, it really had an issue and uh, maybe I'm overpricing it, you know, I mean, you never know. So, uh, you know, that's what I will do. I will it, basically go through each item, check the titles, check the price, make sure maybe it's in the wrong category even. I mean, it could be anything. Maybe it's listed as a men's, it's actually a women's. I mean, but basically, uh, you know, needless to say, I'm going to try and find out why that item is not selling, correct it, fix it, and you know get it back up on the auction block or back you know back in the store and hopefully with a new title with a lesser price with a better description with better pictures maybe then it, maybe it will sell you know at that point so uh, if not then it's on through the on to the next process so after uh, you know going in and revising them and uh, you know going through uh, you know going through this a couple of times with any particular item so in other words if it comes through and I see that uh, you know it didn't sell, uh, so I changed the title or I changed whatever, um, and it runs, you know, for another month or two or three and or four, whatever, um, and it still doesn't sell. Then uh, what I will do is, I mean, it basically gets to the point to where you know either you're willing to hold on to it, you're willing to you know, just sit and wait for that price, or you know, uh, you know, space is money in this game. So if you have something for so long, eventually it's going to start costing you. So uh, what I will do when I really want to move the inventory, or if I have no choice because I have more inventory coming in than going out. Uh, so what I will do is, uh, you know, run it, run it on sale, you know, mark it down. Now, if they don't sell as a result of the sale that I've ran, um, uh, then what I will do is, is run them back through as an auction. Um, you know, and I will, I'll just do a, a dirt cheap price. I mean, basically as low as I can afford to, you know, depending, you know, on the particular item. But, you know, there comes a point, like I said, when you, you know, you have to recoup your funds. You got to get that out of there. You got to make room for something else, especially if it's just sitting there you know, no, no one wants it apparently. So, you know, you need to move it out. And uh, a lot of times what that's gonna, what that's gonna mean is if it's not going anywhere and you've had it for long enough, then it's overpriced. Uh, you know, if you've, if you've gone through and you've checked that the title's right and you know, maybe you, you, you know, uh, maybe at the beginning you were missing some particular keywords and you got that fixed, uh, you know, cause there could be many, many reasons why any particular item doesn't sell. Um, and what you can even do is if it's not selling, uh, you know, and you really just, you know, you, you know that it's worth uh, more than, than than you're asking or you know you have it really underpriced is take it out and just rerun and, and relist the whole thing you know uh, maybe you know it could be any particular any tiny thing could be wrong it could be causing the it could be causing you know the eBay algorithms to overlook your item for some reason I've, I've had that happen uh, so I mean you can do that and like I said uh, what you can do is just you know worst case scenario put it up for auction put a low price on it and you can guarantee it in one week it's gonna be gone so, uh, and that's another good thing about that running auctions is that in seven days, that item's gone and you can even run it as low as, you know, as, as three days, you know? So when you run auctions, you run them low and you run a lot of them, uh, you know, that adds up real quick. And, and it's also a good way to move out old inventory. All right, guys, another really, really good thing to do uh, that I do with my items when I can't sell them and I've had them for a really long time. And I know that they do have value. Uh, even some of those C items, you don't know, have A, B's and C's. Even a lot of the C items, this is how they actually end up. Uh, is, is they will, I will put them in the store, you know, and maybe they won't sell. Maybe I'm only asking 15 or, or $19 or even like 13 or 15 bucks, you know, uh, which I hate to go too much lower than that. Uh, in all honesty, I mean, I will even go down to, I won't go down to single digit numbers. In other words, I'm not going to $9 and under, uh, I'll keep, try to keep it always over $10. Uh, once it gets down to about 10, $10 and below, it's really not worth my time, even if it's been in there for a really long time. But uh, you can do that. I mean, you, you can make money that way. Uh, you know, it's, there's nothing to say that you can't sell something for $10 and make money because, you know, if you've had it long enough and, I mean, if you've got something free or you paid a quarter for it and you sell it for $10, I mean, you made money. Uh, it's not a lot of money. You still have to store it and ship it and list it and all that. So, you know, $10, even if you're, you know, after you pay your fees and everything, you're still looking at like maybe seven or eight bucks. 
uh, you know, plus what you paid for it. I mean, even if you make five dollars profit, that's still money. So because if you sell ten dollars, I mean, if you sell ten items and you're only making five dollars profit, that's fifty bucks. So you know, you can make money that way. But what I will do with items like that is I will take them and group them and sell them in lots. You know, I'll group them according to likeness and sell them in two, three, uh, in three piece, four piece, five, six piece, ten piece lots of uh, items that are like that. In that particular case, like I said, just group them by size. You can group them by style. You can group them by women's, uh, you know, men's. I mean, uh, anything that you want, basically. As long as they all have that in common, that's good enough to put them together as a lot and to sell them that way. But obviously, the lots that sell the best, uh, you know, as far as clothing, are lots that are all in the same size. So, you know, all men's medium uh, and the same style. So, uh, you know, because if a guy buys, if a guy wants to pick up, you know, three or four polo shirts, if they're all the same style, the same size, you know, he's going to be happy to buy them. And, uh, you know, you can get rid of three shirts, you know, all in one hit and, uh, you know, clear out that inventory quickly and also put some coin in your pocket. So that's a really good way to get rid of things is to group them in lots, uh, you know, of, li according, of each according to likeness. All right, all right, guys, next step in the process of getting rid of this old inventory. Now, say you've been through all these processes and all these uh, squeeze tactics, and you've still got this stuff. It still is not going anywhere, you know? It's the hanger on, you know? Uh, so what, you, what, what I would do, or what I do, you know, uh, I don't do it as often as I used to, uh, but what I would do is I would have a yard sale. Uh, and at the yard sale, I will sell all the clothes. I mean, I'll throw them out there and sell them for a dollar a piece. I'll sell them for two dollars a piece. I'll sell them for 50 cents a piece. I mean, it just depends on what it is. But, you know, a nice clothing item, I mean, you have no problem getting five dollars for it, ten dollars for it, a nice a nice jacket that you can't sell or sport coat. Uh, or, you know, two bucks for a, a shirt that you just can't sell, you know? I mean, but like I said, there comes a point when after it's been lying in inventory for, you know, a year or, or two years or maybe it's only six or eight months, depending on your business model, but that it's beginning to cost you money. So if you can get rid of it for a quarter, it's still better than just giving it away or just letting it sit there, you know, taking up space where something way more valuable, something that could be making you money could be sitting. So have yourself a yard sale and that's another good way to get rid of, uh, you know, old merchandise. And if you sell hard goods, all the better because, you know, hard goods actually sell really well at yard sales. So that's another good way to get rid of inventory, guys. All right, guys. Uh, and if all else fails, if you have run it through all of these processes and it still doesn't sell, you are left with one option to salvage that particular item and to not lose money on it. And that is the Goodwill or the Salvation Army or your local charity. Yes, take it down, donate it to the local Goodwill, and so begins the cycle of life again. All right, guys, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up if it's helped you out. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel if you want to learn more tips and tricks on how to make money on eBay and be your own boss. Thanks for tuning in for another video, guys. And until my next one, you guys be good. Get out there and crush it on eBay.